Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomacher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in to HWWS Web TV. You are watching the Hanging With Web Show, and we are hanging with filmmaker Shiva Rodriguez. Yay. Shiva, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. You're very welcome. Um, Thank you. So, first of all, how's Phantasm going for you? It's been interesting. Has it? Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been meeting a lot of people. And not all of them were dressed up. No, no, not no, at all. No, some of them were actually like normal people. Those it, are the scary ones, by the they way. They are. When you're but at it's a horror fun. convention, the Jasons yeah. and the Freddies, they're normal. Mm -hmm. It's the the guy that comes up in like the turtleneck and you're like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, people I love horror fans. They're just they're fun. It's fantastic. They really are. The guild. Tell us about the guild. Okay, the Guild was actually done as a 48-hour film challenge. Wow. The whole thing was shot in 48 hours in uh, Richmond, Virginia. We uh -huh. were part of a horror contest, and it had technical difficulties at the end, so it never actually made the finish line oh. <laughs> because it got stuck on, uh, on, in editing. So This my, happens a lot. It does. I have entire episodes it, of the show. It does. That, it, it was and, heartbreaking. Yeah. Now, the ironic thing is we had drawn either dark comedy or or technology gone wrong and we chose to do a dark comedy and we were joking that we should have just filmed the editor screaming at the machine and turned it in as a you know technology, it as a technology film. <laughs> and that's a day with an editor yes. yes uh you know my favorite my favorite <laughs> phrase uh they hate it i love it is my favorite phrase on set mm -hmm. is when we start flubbing things up and I get a guest, especially a filmmaker, who'll say, okay, we'll fix that in post. Mm -hmm. And I watch their eyes. Yes. They get really <laughs> that, big That like is saucers. evil, <laughs> evil, evil. Yeah. So what we ended up doing is my partner was like devastated. And I, I looked at it and I was like, you know, we can add on to this and make it a little better. I mean, we couldn't fix much of the main things. So I came back home to Florida, called up a bunch of you know friends and filmmakers I knew and said, look, the premise of this thing is it's a guild for serial killers. So I thought, why don't a we guild add? Yes, it's a killers. guild for serial killers. Because everybody needs a union. Exactly. So we decided we were going to film some audition tapes of people auditioning to be part of the guild. So oh my God. That, filmed... That's got to be hilarious. Mm -hmm. yes, wow. Yes. Auditioning so, for the serial so killer. So we, we had people that had goofy names like the birthday party killer and uh, one Did of our. Did he get in? Mm, she. 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 Did she get in? Is she um, a guild member now? No, she got tricked. Oh. Her victim was also auditioning. Oh, <laughs> wow. As things sometimes turn out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Never send the understudy in. Yeah, we had the, uh, the main actor from uh, Virginia was actually my husband. And so, of course, he was there. So we thought, let's put his audition tape in. And he, we know he's a solo act during the film. So we have him with a partner talking about how they're going to be the greatest serial killer team ever. Oh, wow. And then something goes wrong there. Wow. <laughs> so. That's... What a neat concept, though. That's yeah. that's kind of a really cool idea. Yes. Um, how long have you been into filmmaking? Um, well, I started in 2008 as a special effects artist. Okay. I do a lot of like the gags. I, I don't do the makeup as much as I do building the gags for you know cutting heads off stuff like that. And then in 2012, I had written. I also screenwrite, and I'd written a, a werewolf movie. Okay. And I wanted some directors I knew to produce it because on my FX bucket list was on-screen werewolf transformation. Ooh. And they looked at it and they were like, we think you should direct it. And I had zero interest in directing ever. I saw what kind of you know hair tearing out they have. Yeah. And they threatened me because the one thing I hate more than I had zero that, special effects, just <laughs> two chairs and two people. Yeah. And there are days when there are patches and because mm -hmm. I just can't take it anymore. Yeah. And so I kept wow. Yeah. So basically, these two these two directors I knew threatened me. They well, they were blackmailing me. They know that I don't like being on camera. Uh, so they so told. Act me. or direct? No, no, it was worse. Oh. Um, they were going to send my resume and sign and, you know, forge my signature on Face Off because Face Off is looking for females. Oh, which, by the way, and, coolest show on TV. Yeah. High stress. Exactly. And if you're camera shy. I'm, I'm camera shy and I'm not a makeup artist. I'm an effects person. There is a difference. It's like I can yeah. pitch people off the balcony, but I'm not going to be able to make them into like Frankenstein. 
I so can they throw Frankenstein off a balcony. Yeah, that, exactly. That's just, that's I can I can skewer him. I can yeah. cut his head off, but I don't know. <laughs> so I I knew they were serious, and so it was like, okay, I'll direct this. And it we had 35 day shooting schedule. I did. I had to take a few months off to build the werewolves <laughs> afterwards, and then we had to go back for a few days to you know do the werewolf scenes. It was my first time directing. I had no idea what I was doing. I told everybody right off the bat, oh, look, first time director, I'm pretending to be a director. For some reason, somehow we got through it all. The film is complete crap, but it's got a solid story. We've got it finished. Some people How really like it. it not How'd with the way I it? wanted it to be. We had technical difficulties again in Florida. We had built them so they were robotic, okay. animatronic. And they're sitting in my studio while I'm building other stuff and the humidity creeps in and fries everything so we had oh. to turn them into puppets and I had a team of like six people and we're out in the Florida hot sun <laughs> working these puppets Werewolf with people puppets. covered in fur so if wow. they get caught on camera you just see the fur. Wow. <laughs> it, it, it was it was it was pretty bad but the transformation itself I was happy with we we had to limit it because some things just were not going to work. Yeah. But, um, you yeah, know, it, it was fun. I can say I did it. Uh, the film's actually up on Amazon, and, and the critics immediately ripped it to shreds and said I should never do film again well, and all that. Well, I do bit. want to point this out, and I know many of you on the Internet won't agree with this statement, but I'm going to say it anyway because I like to remind our artists that on Amazon in mm -hmm. particular and on many, many, many uh, of the available distributorships that we have as independent yeah. uh, authors, filmmakers, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, these are not critics. Oh, I know. These are customers. <laughs> I know. That's the polite term. Uh, uh, it, I found it amusing. Yes. I really did. It is. So it is important to denote that, you know, uh, an actual critic sometimes has an understanding of what you went through to get there. Yeah. And yeah. so even if you know that what you did was tripe, and I know that some of the stuff that I've done was yeah. tripe, but um, a critic will at least find a nice way of telling yeah. you that. Well, uh, uh, a customer sometimes, yeah. you guys are just mad that you paid a dollar ninety nine, <laughs> and when you're when you're mad about your dollar ninety nine, you are um, not kind. Is a good word. <laughs> That's a good word. For yes, it. you probably yeah. heard a lot of words that you didn't know yet. <laughs> Now, to be fair, uh, one of the directors that had talked me into directing, uh -huh. he had given me a slice of advice that I, I've always kept to heart, and I always tell other filmmakers when they get started out. He said, your first film is your, is your film school. Your second film showed if you learned anything. Now, with a werewolf feature, I took the advanced courses. But, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know, I don't true. know what we were thinking. But after that, my second film, my third film, you know, every, it just, it gets, just better. gets better and better. So yeah. when, my, when the next film I put up on Amazon, I put that up, and I haven't had any bad reviews. See? And I was like, wow, didn't you guys tell me that I should, like, not do this ever yeah. again? Didn't you say something about going back to wherever I came <laughs> yes. from? Yeah. They are. So she has a card up there. It says Father of Lies. I don't know mm -hmm. why it says that. Would you like to tell me why it says that? I will. That's the other That's the other piece that I have in festivals right now that's releasing at the end of this month. Okay. And it's a, it's a horror fantasy piece. A horror fantasy piece. Yes. Okay. I am a big fan of Norse mythology. Ooh. And I, my husband and I co-wrote this, uh, we have a, a full screenplay for it, and then we thought, okay, proof of concept. So it's the story of Loki uh, right before Ragnarok. Wow. And we have it, it's, it's set both in the very, very distant past with the gods, and then in the future with people finding him tie, bound and accidentally releasing him, and of course, all the fun Don't that goes along that. with that. Don't do that. I mean, if you see some guy who's speaking a little strange, tied to a tree, leave him alone. <laughs> Generally a good rule. He's probably tied to a tree for a reason. Right, so the short is in festivals now, and I think, it, I think its last festival was like a week or so ago. But we decided we we're going to go ahead and release it for Halloween. That's fantastic. And it was fun. I actually ended up being what in it. What is your favorite part of filmmaking? My favorite part of filmmaking? Yeah, what is your, what, and you've been doing this oh. now for a few years and it's... Oh my goodness. You've got the bug, obviously, because you're still doing it. You're yeah. still making it. So I, I'm what clinically is it? What is insane. It? What's, what's that thing in there that is the spark for you that you enjoy most? It is so hard to make that call. 
I think a lot of it is just watching it come together. Uh -huh. When you have the right cast, the right crew, the right situation, or even afterwards, even when we're goofing off at the end of something and everybody's happy and we know even if something didn't work and we know that we just wasted a whole day shooting this, something that doesn't work. <laughs> if everybody can still laugh at the end and have a drink and chill out and say, okay, we'll be back tomorrow to try well, this again. Well, film sets are great places because the, one of the things that they do when they're successful mm -hmm. is they build camaraderie and community. They do, very when much. When you are on a film set and you're spending that much time each day shooting mm -hmm. and, and working out your dailies and going through your scripts, you're, you're a part of a huge collaboration oh, yeah. of writer, director, actor, every grip mm -hmm. has a role and it's, so you're building a community of people that you'll probably always fall back on yeah. for the next project and the oh, one after that. Not so. necessarily, I mean, I love the fact that some actors that were in some of my early work are now, you know, doing bigger films out of the country and I hear from them, they're like, yeah, I'm in Iceland doing something. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> it's, awesome. It's nice to know, you know, though, to be a step on that journey, right? Yeah. To say, they call you up and they're like, hey, remember back when we were, remember back when we did that werewolf thing yeah, and everything went exactly. wrong? Yeah, exactly. And, and now they're doing these And then things. if they're in town, they'll call me, hey, are you working on something? Can I get in on it? It's that's like, awesome. okay, you just got done doing a big, a big thing and you want to come in on one of my little shorts? Fine, come on over, you know. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love the camaraderie of it, especially since um, in my real life I, I write and I work from home, so I don't get out much. It's very. So yeah. when I'm when I do get out, it's always film. That's that's my social life. <laughs> so it is a lot of fun too. It, it is. It's it's fantastic. That's our shut up card. Apparently, we have you know done our thing here. So uh -huh. we're gonna say goodbye and we're gonna say thank you. We want to say thank you to our friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, Space Coast Comics. Indie Originals, Josh Bauer for all the set pieces here over at J. Bauer Art. Thank you to Cogler's Emporium and Embellish Effects, uh, the Foxwood Wine Company, because after a day on the con floor, these chairs are cozy. Thank you very much to Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida for everything you do for the Central Florida communities. And our new friend here, Sherry Bright, uh, Sherry's Bright Ideas. Sherry's responsible for putting this lamp on our set and letting us play with Scooby-Doo this week. That is so bit. cool. Thank you so much, <laughs> Sherry, for that. Thank you for logging on and tuning in and for sharing this video. Hit subscribe, ding the bell, and come back more to see who we're hanging with next. Awesome. Thank Mary you so much. Thank you. Awesome.